Hello, everybody, and welcome back to a brand new episode of NASCAR Heat 3. Career Mode. I hope you're all having a great day. Today, we go to Kentucky for the Xfinity Series and in the Cup Series. And I decided to enter myself into the Xfinity Series race today. So we were in our own Xfinity car here tonight at Kentucky. Unfortunately, we didn't have the best qualifying position down there in P17 for the start of this race, and it was a pretty rough one for myself here at Kentucky, unfortunately, tonight in the Xfinity Series. Just didn't really have the speed that I had hoped we had. We come straight towards the final uh, lap of this race. Didn't even go anywhere. We were still P19 at the end of this thing as we came through turns 3 and turns 4 for the final time here in Kentucky. Trying to get up to P18, which we do as we pass the 11 of Ryan Truex as we head down to the line just in front of him we would get p18 unfortunately here in kentucky so a pretty rough finish for us at this track unfortunately but now we obviously have to focus on the cup series race hopefully we can have a much better run on the cup side usually we have a good amount of speed at kentucky but we can never really seem to put a good finish together in the cup series hopefully we can change that today and as it comes straight through into qualifying out of turn four it wasn't as good of a lap as i've had at previous qualifyings in here but we've come through to qualify p10 with a 30.492 so hopefully we can move our way forwards with our teammate william byron on the pole here for kentucky Kentucky. This week, the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series is the Kentucky Speedway for the running of the Quaker State 400. Kentucky is a daunting 1.5 mile asphalt trioval located in Sparta, Kentucky, about 60 miles northeast of Louisville. Now, in 2017, Martin Truex Jr. won his series leading third race of the season here in overtime. He also swept all three stages. He was clearly emerging as the championship favorite after that dominant performance. So will a different driver start to separate themselves from the pack here in the Bluegrass State? Well, we're about to find out. NASCAR Racing from Kentucky is coming up next on PRN. All right, we're ready to go green here for the Quaker State 400 at Kentucky Speedway. William Byron finally up front here on the pole. Uh, hopefully he has some good things here tonight in Kentucky. Martin Truck Jr. remembers us. So we've got to watch out for him now as Kurt Busch crashed during qualifying. So he's driving a backup car. He's been starting at the back of the field quite a bit recently, unfortunately, for him. Now as we get ready to go green here from the 10th starting Good position day. here day. at Kentucky. Right, it's ready. William Byron here on the pole now as the green flag is out. And we are underway here in Kentucky. Kevin Harvick leads that outside lane as we go down towards turns one and turns two for the first time here in Kentucky. It's Martin Truex Jr. in that third or uh, uh, fifth position behind Kyle Larson, who is in that third position as we jump up to that outside. Already going three wide here with Rick Castanos Jr. as we go down the back straight away. The outside is uh, really good through turns one and turns two at this racetrack. We usually have a much stronger car than the AI at turns one and turns two, so we know that's going to be our chance to gain up a lot of track time throughout the night. Now on our inside, it's the 40 car of uh, Jamie McMurray is across the line to complete this first lap here in Kentucky, dropping down to P14, so not a good start for myself here as we go through turns one, carrying a bunch of speed now up to the top lane, making the three wide there for a moment with Eric Almarola as we came out of turn two behind 18 of Kyle Busch, sitting P11 at this point now as we came through another lap later. We had dropped a few more spots, but continue to use the momentum on the high side and pass Kyle Busch now, as well as passing Joey Logano as we went down the back straightaway, so moving up into the top 10 as well as getting ahead of Jones for the moment in P9 as we came through now on lap 10 still running about P9 or so but we started moving forwards again now right behind Martin Drake Jr. as he almost squeezes me into the wall so he has no problem making it known that he still does not like me now as we come through turns 3 and turns 4 now up to P7 looking to the right hand side of Truex we might have a chance to get past him now as we head down the front straightaway side by side with Martin Truex Jr. Ryan Blaney up in P5 Trying our best to get ahead of Truex now as there's a car rejoining the track through turns one and he slides up and Truex hits the brakes in front of me and slides up and we hit him in the back. It's spinning. Martin Truex Jr. of our rival goes as we come down the back straightaway. The caution's going to fly now in Kentucky. Kyle Larson, the leader, as we're going to get ready to go green here from the sixth position. 
I didn't really feel like that was my fault there with the incident with Truex. Obviously, it was just kind of coincidental that Truex, our rival, happened to be the one that slid right up in front of me and hit the brakes. Uh, as you saw there, I think it was the 51 of Cody Ware it might have been, uh, or Ryan Truex, I couldn't remember, but they slid up the track, or just rejoined the track, and unfortunately, Truex slams on the brakes in front of me now as we come through turns one and turns two on this restart, making it three wide with Brad Kozlowski and Ryan Blaney now as we exit turn two. Kyle Larson leads the way as we go down the back straightaway in front of us. It's our teammate of William Byron on the inside of Denny Hamlin as we're three wide in the middle here with Kozlowski, and now Boyer's going to force him four wide as we go through turns three and turns four. Not a safe position to be in. Now as we make contact with Kozlowski as we exit the corner somehow. Keeping it clean as we have Harvick on our inside as we come through to cross the line in those contact with Harvick. And now into Kozlowski we go and up the hill into the wall we all go. Kozlowski and Harvick involved in myself crashing now on the outside thankfully. Three seconds of damage is all it is so we can quickly get to pit road, repair the car and remain in this race but just a three wide in the middle me and Harvick got together I hit Kozlowski and then we just kind of ping ponged and right, unfortunately it did not end Be well for Kozlowski or myself now as the green flag is back out though there's only two laps to go though in this first stage here in Kentucky so obviously not a, a good end that it's going to be for us here in stage one but we know we have speed and we know we can get ourselves back to the front here in Kentucky as we come through turns one and at turns two one good thing though for us is we just made a pit stop for four tires, two cans of fuel, the car's repaired, and everybody uh, just about at the end of this first stage is going to have to come to pit road, and we're going to be able to stay out, and we could definitely be up in the top five at the beginning of stage two. Obviously, we're not going to get stage points here in this uh, first stage due to that incident putting us back here now as we come through to cross the line to start the final lap in stage one, sitting in P33, now 34th as we go down through turns one and uh, turns two on the outside of Joey Gase as we come through a bunch of momentum on this outside lane now as we come out of turn two up now inside the top 30 as we head down the back straightaway gonna make a three wide up the middle there between Chastain and Priest as we go through turns three and turns four for the final time now in Kentucky in stage one at least as we come through on the exit of the corner sitting P27 and Kyle Larson comes through to win stage one Denny Hamlin second and we get P27 in this first stage obviously like I said pretty much everybody's gonna have to come to the pit, uh, lane here so a big opportunity for myself we would come out P2 with Landon Castle a bunch of slow cars up here which is going to be a big opportunity for myself now as the green flag is out stage 2 is underway here in Kentucky up on this front row now so almost that incident has given us an opportunity to capitalize big time here in this second stage Thankfully for us, Martin Truex Jr. is not around as we come through to take the lead here in Kentucky. So we don't have to worry about anyone pretty much trying to wreck us right now here in the second stage. Hopefully now as we go down the back straight away towards turns three. Unfortunately, uh, Truex's rivalry just continues. We need to try and find a way to put an end to it. But obviously me dumping him again doesn't really help as we come out of turn four. We're coming through down through the tribal to complete this first lap here in this second stage. Clearly, you can see we're driving away from these guys behind us. Castle, uh, Priest, a bunch of slow cars here in the top 10. And that's a big opportunity for myself to just create a gap. Kyle Larson, he was the kind of the quickest one to be working his way through the field at this point in the race. Now as we come through straight to lap 10 of 17 in the second stage, still running P1 as we come through turns 1 and turns 2. And now we're going to do a little bit of a crank it up for the rest of this lap. So turn up your volume and let's hear these engines. A little bit of helmet cam there for you guys as well when we started that little crank it up now as it came through on that lap 12 just a lap or so later here in the second stage continuing to hold on to the lead Kyle Larson at this point I think had driven up into P2 as we cross the line hit five to go now in stage two though the caution comes out now and that's going to force a late race restart here or a late stage restart for the second stage.
And I was certainly concerned because I know we don't necessarily have the tires that are good enough to hold on to the stage victory. So we're hopefully we can somehow do it now as it's two laps to go here in stage two. We have a good launch uh, compared to Larson and Elliott now as we have about two car lengths between myself and second place as we come through turns one and turns two. My biggest concern is turns three now as we head down the back straightaway. Elliott is closing now as we go down towards this third turn. Elliott gets a great entrance now as we try to shut the door there and we get sideways touching the apron as well and up the hill we go and completely lose the lead now blowing the lead as Elliot our teammate goes through to make the pass now as Truex gets my inside we almost get hit by him as I saw him at the last moment so I got out of the way now to start this final lap here in this second stage coming through turns one and turns two now on the outside there Martin Truex Jr. going in pretty deep there deeper than I have gone so far here in turns one and turns two a little bit sideways but we hang on to the car as Truex slides up in front of us as we go down through turns three and turns four for the final time sliding up the hill again as these tires wear it is so hard to keep the car down on the inside through turn three and turn four so now we drop the p9 as we come through chase elliott wins the second stage and we go from first to ninth in just two laps unfortunately for ourselves at the end of the second stage here in kentucky so certainly we don't have a very fast car when the tires wear compared to the AI as the usual. As you would come to pit road, two cans of fuel and four tires and we would fall all the way down to P39 as Kyle Busch is actually out of this race it looks like down there in 40th. Not sure how on earth we had lost so many positions but either way the green flag is out and the final stage is now underway here at Kentucky Motor Speedway now as we come through behind the number two of Kozlowski going into his inside. It's only 25 laps to go in this race so obviously not a lot of time now as you sit behind the 95 of Matt Benedetto. obviously the news okay. came out today in real life De Benedetto will not be in that car next year because obviously Joe Gibbs Racing wants Christopher Bell in that car an awful move if you ask me to kick De Benedetto out of the 95 but you can't really do anything about it now as you come through turns 3 and turns 4 make it a 3 wide there with Kozlowski and De Benedetto now as you head down the front straightaway 3 wide with Gone and Priest as you come through to cross the line obviously just jumping up to the south side because the inside was going nowhere now as we go through turns 1 and turns 2 building up all this momentum as we pass our teammate of Alex Bowman looking to the outside of Kevin Harvick so there's some big names back here with us so certainly a bunch of drivers actually uh, got messed over. I mean, Kyle Larson's just up in front of us. He was second in stage two, so it looks like a bunch of cars just took less tires, a bunch of slower cars again. So it was an opportunity for sure for myself. So we weren't really in as much of a bad position as I thought we were. Now as we came to lap 50, we had actually moved up into P19 as we came through turns one and turns two. Now closing in here to the right-hand side of our arrival of Martin Truex Jr. to go down the back straightaway, uh, expecting him to try and put me in the wall. But to my surprise, he didn't even try now as we go through turns three and turn four. He might have tried, but we just came through way too quick. So we got away from two weeks now as we came through on lap uh, uh, lap 52 with 16 to go. Now up into P14, continuing to use this outside lane as we make a three wide there with Newman. And I think that is Cody Ware. Now we move up inside of the top 10 as we went down the back straightaway. We would continue moving forward as we got up now to P6 as you came to lap 59, less than 10 laps to go. Now following Kyle Larson and Eric Jones, I really could not get past Larson and Jones on the outside, so I decided to ride behind them because Paul Menard was leading this race and he was holding up both Kurt Busch and Chase Elliott. But we did start falling off again now as we came to lap 62. Clint Boyer had gotten into the uh, battle. He had driven right on past me as we came through turns one. Now trying to battle back those Menard. There you see him continuing to lead the way now as we battle side by side with Boyer down the back straightaway trying to just remain in this fight now as we go down towards turns three. And now Boyer gets clear so I fall in just behind him. And Paul Menard, he would get shuffled out of the mix now as he would fall behind me. We get up to P6 as we start this final lap here in Kentucky. Kyle Larson now leading this race as we just had nothing left for these guys. And now though, the caution is going to fly here on the final lap. And that's going to force an overtime restart here in Kentucky. Ryan Truex brings out the yellow flag. You guys saw what happened on our last restart with two laps to go, and now here we are in P6 with two laps to go again to decide the winner here in Kentucky. Larson and Jones on the front row as the green flag is out. We are once again underway on lap 70 of 71, going to make a three wide there already with Kurt Busch and Clint Boyer. Now let's go down towards turns one, trying to get the best launch possible as we come through turns one and turns two for the final, or coming to the white flag this time now here in the final stage at Kentucky, going down the back straightaway up to P4. 
five. So, so far, everything has gone right as we go down towards turn three, getting down to the inside in front of Paul Menard, though, but the back end slips out on me. Thankfully, we hold on, but we slide up the hill. Menard trying to get there, but we keep it pinned down enough, but we're losing time quickly to the cars in front because I'm so far out of the pace with these worn tires as we start this final lap here in Kentucky. Kyle Larson leads the way as we go through turns one. Now Menard looking to my inside as we go for a big slide through turns one and turns two. The back end just not feeling good. And all now as we come down the back straight away for the final time side by side with the 21 of Paul Menard. Larson and Boyer first and second as we're going to go a little bit sideways again through turns three and turns four sliding up the hill. And now we're going to completely fall outside of the top ten as we come through down through the trial for the final time at the line. It's going to be P12 here in Kentucky is Kyle Larson comes home with the victory. Very unfortunate that we couldn't hold on to the top 10, but I was slipping and sliding all over the place in the final laps there. And uh, we went through into turns three on the final lap and the back end just kicked out and then it slid even further. I thought I held onto it and then it just kept on sliding. And unfortunately it didn't go well for us now as we come through to see Truex obviously not happy with us after we dumped him earlier by accident though. I mean, that makes it a little better, right? But as always, if you guys enjoyed this episode, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Those would all be very, very appreciated. And the next one, we go to New Hampshire, the track that we got our first career win at so hopefully we can get another one there as well we go to chicago in the truck series so i will see you guys in the next episode thank you for watching everybody and have yourselves a great day